Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, getting back to work on the Cobra in this video. Uh, last video, if you were watching, you saw me get the dash covered. Uh, so the cover is installed on the dash. Uh, now I need to get back to work on some of the mechanical aspects of getting this thing back on the road. Uh, as I said in the previous video, I will work on the dash a little bit at a time just to kind of get all the holes cut out and gauges fitted. And then I'll do a, a final wrap up on it once I have it uh, all cut out and everything finished, but it's just going to be you know, kind of tedious work that's going to take some time to get completed. So um, have plenty of mechanical work to do on the car before it will be running again. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on everything I have to do. All right, quick update before I get to work on timing the, or getting the timing set in the engine. Uh, I've been working on the dash a little bit, as I said. You can see I got a few things installed. Um, all the lights are in place. Uh, started installing some gauges. As far as the lights go, um, again, these are the ones I got there um, from uh, Lotus Company, uh, Europa Specialties uh, out of England. I uh, got those sent to me. Um, they come with like, these retaining clips. I did not want to break the things trying to get them installed. They're in there pretty snug with the cover, but then I also put some uh, goop type of glue on them just to kind of hold them in place. And I also gooped the lights into the barrels because they're just a friction fit and a couple of them were a little loose. So I didn't have to worry, want to worry, did not want to have to worry about the lights coming out. Um, I did test everything before getting them installed. So those are mounted in place. And then yeah, you can see I've got four gauges in so far. Uh, one other thing I also did is where it was wrapped over here, you can see from there to there, I cut where it was wrapped over because the tight, the fit was very tight trying to tuck it in under the body lip and the square tube there. Um, it wasn't fitting really well and I wanted to try and just make sure I could get it in there uh, as high as it needs to go to get it fitted right. So um, that's where I'm at on the dash. I will continue as time allows to get the rest of the gauges in and start getting switches transferred and stuff like that. But just wanted to show you uh, how things are coming along. Pretty happy with how it looks so far. All right, so now it is time to mess with the timing on this. Um, if you've watched some of my older videos from when I got this car, it ran like crap, and it's because this thing has an adjustable timing pointer. And you should be able to see it tucked away in there. And when I got it, the timing was way off on the engine, and that was why I ran like crap. So I did a rough guess of trying to get it top dead center. I got the mark basically pointed straight up and matched the, the pointer that timed it again, and then it ran a lot better. So. Um, that was definitely part of the problem. But for the uh, ProFlow 4 setup, you need to have it set at 12 degrees and it you know, sounds to be, or set, it reads like it needs to be pretty, pretty damn close. So what I'm gonna do is pull the number one spark plug and make sure I have it at perfectly top dead center, get the mark set, then set it at 12 before, and then I can put the distributor in and then that will be done. Um, I also have to pull the valve covers off because I'm changing from these fuel injected valve covers to the old school Cobra valve covers you can see in the box over there. And while I do that, or when I do that, I want to go ahead and tighten up head bolts. Um, this thing, ever since I've had it, has had a very slight leak of coolant, and I'm pretty sure it's coming out of you know, one of the head bolts on the other side. So the lower roll, which go into the jackets, I was gonna pull those one by one, put sealant on them, retorque them. But then also while I have the valve covers off, I was going to retorque the ones that are under the valve covers as well. So uh, that is the plan. I'm going to go ahead get this plug out, see if I can get top dead center figured out, and get the pointer set to make sure it is proper. All right, time for a little update. Um, I went ahead, pulled the valve cover off. I torqued those five one at a time, starting from the center and working my way out. I uh, went to 85 foot-pounds on those, so they're good and tight. Uh, a couple of them did have a little bit of room to go, so nothing terrible, though. They weren't obscenely loose. Uh, pulled the number one spark plug out. I used a uh, thin tool that I had a little right there. Put that in the hole, had it kind of touching the top of the piston, and just went back and forth with a uh, wrench on the uh, crank bolt until I got to the point where it wasn't coming up anymore. Uh, I started at like 20 before top dead center on the, uh, the crank and then just kind of slowly worked it. Uh, so here you might be able to see my final marks. The red line right below the marker is zero, so it was close. It was probably within a few degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and move the pointer to match up with that, so that way the pointer will be good. And then I'll set it to 12 
and then I can put the distributor in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on that. All right, everything is adjusted. I've got it set to what appears to be 12 degrees. Hard to say because my uh, damper is a little worn down, but it looks like it's about the 12 mark. It's you know just a little bit past the 10. Uh, looks like it's about the same or the right spot. So next thing is installing the distributor. Uh, this is the distributor that comes with the setup. Uh, that is number one where that um, screw head is and the little kick out. That's the number one plug mark. It's marked on the distributor cap right there. And I did uh, double check it when I had the cap on. So that's all set there. First thing I need to do though is I am changing the gear uh, on the distributor to something that is more friendly with the uh, e-cam that is in this car. So I'm gonna grab that real quick. All right, so the gear that's on here is a blue dot gear and it's supposed to be a pretty universal one, but I wanted to get something that will hold up with the cast iron. So I got the yellow dot gear. Uh, part number is 22735 and that is direct from Edelbrock. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, punch out the roll pin, swap gears, put the roll pin back in and then go ahead and get the distributor installed. All right, and yellow dot gear is installed. Roll pins back in place. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, put a little lube on the O-ring that came with it and get this punched in. All right, well, as you can see, the distributor's in. Um, I did have to remove the throttle body and move the uh, turkey pan back a little bit just to get room to get it lined up. Um, but as you can see, you got the rotor lined up with that, which is the number one uh, firing spot. So. It's in place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything else buttoned up. All right, well, problem number, well, I've lost count at this point in time with trying to do this swap. As you can see right there, we are touching the two distributor posts uh, with the turkey pan and it is not in place. You can see it's close, very close, but it is not gonna fly. So I am probably going to have to dent the turkey pan, which that kills me because this is not a cheap piece. It's, you know, a nice piece, but I guess, you know, race cars, that's probably what you would have seen in racing. So that is probably my only option because I don't believe there's a smaller distributor available for this swap. I'll double check before I start taking a hammer and dolly to that turkey pan. But uh, yeah, not real happy at the moment, uh, does not fit. So. Uh, for now, that is kind of on hold, and I'm going to go continue with sealing up these bottom five bolts here one by one, and then get those torqued, and then I can get the valve cover on this side. All right, update time. So I just went ahead and redid all the lower head bolts. You can see there's some sealant coming out of them all. Um, pulled them all out, started with the center, and then went, uh, you know, one out, one out, two out, two out uh, to get them you know, in order or whatever. Um, they were... A, probably torque to spec, maybe a little loose. They were all a little bit different. There was barely any sealer on these, so if there are, if any at all. Um, so I loaded them up. They are good and covered with ARP thread sealer. So got that, uh, you know, them nice and covered. I cleaned the, the bolts up and then I also sprayed some brake cleaner down the threads to clean the threads up. Um, and then they are torqued to 75 foot pounds. So this side, as far as Retorking the head is all set. All right, here we go. New valve cover installed uh, with the bolts. They are ARP bolts. They are torqued to 156 inch pounds. Uh, it's 13 foot pounds according to the book. So uh, got this side done. Everything is wrapped up here. The only thing I have to do here is uh, the header bolts, but I need to order Norlock uh, washers uh, to keep the things tight so they don't bounce loose so i need to get those ordered uh, and then i'll get those sorted out but uh yeah otherwise that is it on this side all right so it's the next day um i did do some searching online i don't believe there is a distributor that will work that's smaller um edelbrock does offer some other distributors they're for different engines though so i think that's going to be the problem um don't know how, if they would even fit the small block i can't find a small block distributor for the ProFlow 4 that has a uh, smaller diameter. So I think I'm SOL there. So I went ahead and took off the throttle body and, and everything just to see if maybe I could just redrill holes and shift this back. But as you can see, based on where it's at, it would pretty much need to go here, which that's a pretty big offset. I mean, I'm talking about moving it almost you know, three quarter inch back. 
So I don't think that's gonna work either. So it does appear to me, my only option is going to be to basically mangle this nice turkey pan that was not exactly the cheapest thing in the world. Um, so I'm thinking if I wanna keep this, I am going to have to do some hammering to this corner and bend this in. Um, I mean, the only thing I can say is, you know, kind of will go with the theme of race car, I guess. You know, you uh, do what you need to do to meet tech to make things work. Um, but yeah, I don't believe I'm going to be able to make this work unless I go ahead and do some significant adjustments to it. Because, yeah, there, right about there is where it would need to be. And as you can see, I mean, those holes are way off. So it's going to be some serious mangling to get get it to work and I don't think that's gonna fly so uh, yeah looks like I am going to be destroying this turkey pan all right so considering my options I think what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting this instead of trying to bash it with a hammer because I have a pretty good amount that I need to clearance one thing I am finding is if you look at this this isn't even really that square I mean these are all handmade so I, you know I don't think I'm gonna mangle it terribly uh, you know those Tape marks are exact from the holes, but you can see it kind of bubbles out off to one side there. So anyway, what I'm going to do probably is cut down the sides. Uh, those are pretty straight lines there. And then I can split it at the bottom, kind of bend the top in, bend the bottom in, and then just try and maybe use some angle iron or, some, or well, angle aluminum and kind of rivet together a patch in there. Um, and then, you know, make it work that way. So that's the plan um I, I really can't think of anything else to do uh there like i said there's no smaller distributor available if i cut this and just try and slide it it's just not going to look right with where the air cleaner sits in it it's not going to be centered anymore so really my only option is to open up the front there and i just think beating it in with a hammer is going to look worse than cutting it so I'll sleep on it, but this at least gives me an idea of like where things need to be as far as the clearancing that I need to do. So it's a pretty good amount that needs to be clearanced. Just real quick, I did put a plug wire on there. I got new wires because the other ones were a little uh, worn out. You can definitely see, you know, just to show you how much it does need to come down. It's quite a bit. So uh, yeah, gonna sleep on it and see what I end up doing. All right, so next morning, and I was thinking about it and I think I figured out how I'm gonna approach this. Uh, plan of attack is I think I'm going to take a wheel uh, grinder and then just kind of cut down a little cutoff wheel on a Dremel this side and then this side along these lines and that way I can try and push this in um, you know, hammer it inward and then I can probably just use some aluminum or whatnot and just kind of make like a little cover on the inside to cover that area so it'll look pretty aesthetically pleasing from overhead because I do have some scrap aluminum that I can just, you know, cut and then rivet it in place. Because, um, you know, the, the inside of this, which will be bashed in, not going to be really noticeable because the distributor and everything will be in it. And you're going to be looking from overhead versus from underneath. So uh, I think that's going to be the best plan to make this work and clear the distributor. Um, I think, you know, yeah, it'll look the best that way. You know, and like I said, I'll just have like a little bit of a polished aluminum panel on the inside. Um, and that should do it uh, and that should fix my problem. I should be able to you know, get the turkey pan in and have everything working. So that being said, I'm actually gonna be heading out of town for a couple of days. Uh, so I will probably be doing that in the next video. Um, so yeah, this one's long enough. I'm probably gonna wrap it up here. Got a you know, de decent amount of work done in this video. Uh, next video, I'll pick up, get this knocked out. Um, I got the Nord locks for the exhaust bolts so I can get those installed. I'll do, have to do the valve cover and all the head stuff on the driver's side head uh, so I can get that wrapped up. And uh, yeah, I should get most of the top side of the motor stuff done. And then I can get to work on the front of the engine, pulling off the water pump, resealing everything. And then it's going to be plumbing the cooling lines, plumbing the fuel lines. Um, you know, getting back to work on the dash, as you can see here, I have gotten a few more things installed, so coming along slowly but surely. Um, but yeah, uh, that is it for this video. So if you like what you're seeing, uh, you want to follow along, see what else happens, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. 
Um, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section. I will read them. I will reply. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.